Today is November 20th, 2013, and we are at the James A. Lovell Medical Health Center. My name is Cheryl Walker, and I am with the Illinois State Library. Mr. Ramon Calderon will be um, interviewed today, and Mr. Ramon was born February 4th, 1946. Mr. Ramon, for the record, can you state what branch of service you were with, your highest rank that you achieved, and the, the dates of years that you were in the service, and whether you enlisted or was drafted? Yes, uh, I was with the U.S. Army. Uh, I did all my service in Vietnam, uh, uh, two years and three days. Uh, I was, uh, I went in, uh, January, I went in, excuse me, I did my, I started June 20th of 1966, and then January 17th, I was in Vietnam. And uh, my first unit was the uh, 9th Infantry Division, B Company, 9th Aviation Battalion. And also, uh, I was uh, Okay, thank you, sir. I was uh, the first duty I had was I was in charge of division ammunition, uh, and I was uh, also done uh, a door gunner for Ninth Aviation Battalion B Company, and I also uh, was on a demolition team for six months where we blew up faulty ammunition. Uh, like I say, I was, is that, did I get, what else you want? Okay, so where did you take your boot camp at? I took it in Fort Polk, Louisiana, one of the dirtiest, hottest places. They have Tigerland down there. That's for Vietnam service. We can get ready to go over to the to Vietnam. And it was. Uh, I'm glad I I took the training. I mean, I was. I'm sure it saved my life, you know. Other than getting shot by the enemy, and under fire. You know. What is Tigerland service? Tigerland is when infantry, U.S. infantry, goes through the Tigerland. They call it Tigerland because it's it's a uh, it's a replica of some of the hooches and some of the things that you'll be going through with the enemy, the VC, the vehicle. You know, jumping out of window, jumping out of a straw window. Um, Things like that, and uh, they even made a movie out of it, Tigerland. If you look at it, you you understand what I'm talking about. Um. So you enlisted? Yes, I did. I was in, I enlisted because uh, I didn't okay. just want to be drafted. I wanted to be able to serve my full term, whatever. I don't care what I have to do. And it just turned out that I did two years and three days. Did you, um, after hey. you... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I conducted this. Yes, we're interviewing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no problem. I'm sorry. I, you know, I thought I was just having a friendly conversation. Well, that too, but we're into we're into it. <laughs> okay.
So you enlisted. Yes. And did they did you enlist for the infantry? No, I did not. No, I didn't enlist for the infantry. I just enlisted for the draft because I wanted to serve in whatever capacity. It just happened that my combat was due to, I was was in charge of the division, 9th Infantry Division ammunition for the old 20,000. And used to do convoys and stuff like that. We were under fire. But then I was transferred over to B Company, 9th Infantry Battalion, where I had opportunity to fly, you know, as a door gunner on a, on a helicopter. And that was, that was very scary. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting to. He said, do you want to fly? I said, yeah. Like, it's, what am I going to do? Just fly all over Vietnam? But it was kind of nasty. You know, and sometimes I have to keep on crying because it wasn't no joke. When you first went in, and you, the first, got off the bus or the train or the airplane, whatever it was, for boot camp. Right. And they told you were you were in the army. Right. Um, what were your thoughts? I said, well, here we go, let me make the best of it. Uh, I figured, well, I was doing sports, you know, in college and uh, high school, and uh, I could handle this. But when we went to Vietnam, it was a different story. I mean, what you were prepared for, you was not. Everything was out the window almost, you know what I mean? You know, uh, however it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be mad about it, you know? So, did you fly to Vietnam? We flew to Vietnam on a TWO, TWA, excuse me, or United, I forgot which one. I think it was TWA, big plane. And you're in country. Yes. And they give you your uniform. Yes. One uniform? No, we got uh, a few jungle. We got, what was it, two pair of boots or one? Oh, we got three uniforms, just three regular green uniforms, jungle. Uh, we got jungle uniforms. They were all green, drag green, military, you know. And uh, we was in a replacement company is where they flew us to, 90th replacement. And that 90th replacement unit, uh, they come from different units from all over South Vietnam. And you go to, they take you out to that unit. So I went to the 9th Infantry. Did you, were you attached to the 9th unif un, uh, year, Infantry? For a year, three days. Did you know that's who you were attached with? Oh, yeah. When you went over there? Oh, yeah. No, when I got there, yeah, oh, yeah. We wasn't, we wasn't, a lot of times we didn't wear the patch, but the, here's a patch right here. The Forrest Gump patch. If you ever seen Forrest Gump, he wore this patch in the movie. And then you got the jungle scene, where we was down in Mekong Delta. There's a lot of jungle, water. Did you go back to your base camp a lot, or were you? No, no.
I went to my base camp out of one year, one one time. And that's when I thought I should be going home because they, I was in the field. And they and then they brought me back. We, we, actually, we was over with the operation. We came back to the fire base, Macon Delta, Delta downtown. And uh, they told me, no, they gave me a day off. And I burned, I burned some uh, manure, almost burned it, burned it down with a helicopter aviation float. And I went, soon I got back to uh, headquarters, they, they uh, told me, guy told me, put some water on your backside and put your class A uniform on, you're going home. And I already had extended for six months. So I did the three, I did the year in three days, and then I went home for 20 days. Then I went back for Tet, Tet Offensive, Tet Counter Offensive. You know, and there was a lot of things going on. And it's pretty nasty. So where in Vietnam were you stationed? All the places. Can you remember all the places you were stationed in Vietnam? Uh, yeah, I was stationed at uh, for operation with Black Horse, Eleven Cav. They were they were mechanized track tanks stuff like that. Then I did operations with. Uh, uh, our aviation unit and aviation units from all over South Vietnam because we had a big operation and we were taking armed troops, a battalion of them out to battle. And that was in the Mekong Delta. My fire base was in the Mekong Delta from there, I don't know. I would say six, almost uh, 80, 80 miles or so. And uh, I uh, went through Lop Nin, L O C N, I don't know, N G, whatever. But uh, I went through a few more. I can't think of those right off. But uh, I did a lot of service. I went to Long Bend. And Long Bend had the largest ammo dump in South Vietnam. And I used to do convoys. I used to pick the trucks, the people. And we used to drive 22 miles south from our base camp. Ninth Infantry Division Base Camp. Where you every every morning, where you, every morning you can hear the rum. You feel a rumble, but you hear the B-52 bombings along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. We wasn't that far from the border. And uh, Like I say, during Ted, we had a lot of, we had missions, we had a lot of missions. We had to go uh, and support our troops. We had to resupply, you know, uh, the troops, some troops with ammunition. And uh, we had to hand out ammunition to the people in our own base camp because we, you know, some of our, we picked up some VC coming through our area. But, uh, you know, I, I'm glad that I wasn't on the ground. I was in the air, but the air was, door gunners was uh, one of the highest death casualties. And, uh, of course, infantry, same thing, you know. 
here on the ground, you don't know where they're at. You know? Were you single at the time? Yes. Okay. Um, how did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, after about two months, I stopped writing to everybody. I didn't, I didn't know. I don't know. I was at ease with death, so to speak, because I don't know if I was going to make it or not. So why worry? Then you write home, you write to your twin sister and she tell you, oh yeah, we had a, we went to a dance and we had fun. I dropped my girlfriend. I dropped her. Um, you know, I just, I was in, I was in the war. I didn't care about the United States. I did not care. I did not care to hear about how much fun you're having. And in my heart, I didn't mean to be rude, but I had to concentrate on one thing. That's my job, my job, you know. So when you joined the service, you were a 20-year-old. Would you can classify yourself as a man? I was 20. I was, uh, I was 19. I made twenty in Vietnam, the first the first tour. Uh yeah, heck yeah. I drank beer. Two point two beer. <laughs> heck yeah, I was a man. Yes. And I wasn't a man in the United States. He's still a kid, you know. As as other people, as my counterparts, you know. As my other veterans, friends, you know. And I didn't ask nobody to age. I mean, it seemed like everybody was the same age. I don't know. Did you make any close friends? No, I didn't. But I had a close friend. During Ted, he, he came in the country. He was in there two, he was in there two weeks, I think. And he got blown away. But he was with another division, the 4th Infantry. I was with the 9th Infantry. You know what? What? You have to go back there. What? Maybe you're going to the county and looking for us. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Do you have an interview? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe you're going to the but uh, no, I didn't have. I had one good friend, and this guy, it's a white dude, and he was my best friend because we was in the same demolition division, same demolition unit team. Because you know, he had about ten guys, and uh, he used to always tell me about what. Uh, <laughs> what the lieutenant was talking about, you know what I'm saying? Because I was wild and crazy to a certain extent, you know what I mean? He was such a good friend, he, 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 he was. And then my friend that got killed, we was in third grade grammar school together. So it did, it did hurt my heart, you know, very much. But then you have to hurt for a few minutes, then you have to snap out of it. You had, to, you had to get back on your job. You know, but there, it was during Ted. Bad of Dacto, I think, which is real bad. That was a bad one. So, I don't know. I had a little of, it, it's infantry in a way, because if you're a dog gun on you, you're under a lot of stress. You're you're firing a lot, and if you infantry, you're exposed to a lot of stuff and danger. So, but I ain't nothing compared to the guys on the wall. You know, I went to I went to D.C. twice. 
to see my friend. And uh, it was, I don't know, it, it was, it hurt me real bad. Because, you know, you don't realize, you're in the Vietnam, you don't really realize that it's, oh, it's not that dangerous, but until you get under fire or something, you know. Did you enlist with your friend? No, I enlisted, uh, I enlisted with a friend. I enlisted with a friend of mine. Actually, it was two. It was me, them two, myself. And so three of us, we went to Fort Polk together. And after Fort Polk, then we all separated. I was the first one to go to now. You know. Um. So did you stay with B Company 9th Division the whole time? Yes, I stayed with the division the whole time, the whole year, because I went to different places after I come back from my going on my 18 months tour, mm -hmm. actually my second tour, if you will. Yeah, I stayed uh, with the Ninth Street the whole year in the three days. Um, did you, okay, you said you got to come home for an R&R. &R. Yes, because I was coming back. You were coming back. I don't know if it was R&R &R or not. No, because I didn't go. R&R &R is usually is seven days okay. or three days. Okay, so they were sending you back. They sent me back. They sent you back. And then they sent you back. And then they sent me back. Okay. 20 days later. So it really wasn't an R&R. &R. No, it wasn't. No. That. Okay. Did you get any R&R &R over there? No. I got one day R&R. &R. One day. I do recall. We went to in the Mekong Deltas in the pile it was like you where you could ski what do you call those things you know the, the ski you put on your foot and they had a boat I wouldn't dare oh go water ski water ski and then we had a little tour of the little area that was but it was a, it was away from everything, so yeah, it was like a day off. Did you have any entertainers come out to see you? Yes, we had Bob Hope, Bob Hope, Rory Calhoun, the Western Western guy, and we had uh, what is that girl? Uh, Anne Margaret. And the guys went crazy, you know. <laughs> but I was so glad to see all my life, I, you know, watching TV, you see Bob Hope. Bob Hope was in World War II. Bob Hope was in Korea, Bob, you know. And we were, I was invited. I was invited, you know, maybe about 20 guys from my unit and so many from other units. And we went to the to the Papo show. And you were one of them. I was blessed. I was truly blessed. Because mm -hmm. Bob Hope was the greatest. I was the greatest. Um so you uh, some of the medals that you received. Yes. Can you explain some of those to us? Yes. One is the national defense. That's a common one. That's one you see that one little orange and yellow. Did you see the name you with? Uh, that's the national defense. The Vietnam service campaign and the Vietnamese service campaign. Then I had um, 
I had about three, three different more. It was two sets of iron. Uh, one was the Mag V, and the Mag V was a little Pentagon. They built it. They built it in Long Bend, where it's more secure. They built a replica of the, the thing in Washington, the Pentagon in Washington. I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, we were allowed to wear that. And then there was another camp uh, campaign. We was allowed to wear that. And then there's about to be another one. I can't think of the other two. Do you still own your medals? No. No, ma'am. They don't mean nothing to me. Okay. Um, can I ask you, um, when do you remember the day that you came home? No, it was. It was uh, I got out of third. I got out of Vietnam about three days later. I got home around the ninth or tenth. In December, no, not December. Uh, December, the end of December. What did you do? I had a smoke a joint, drank some beer, and you saw God. I went to guys. That's all. I didn't. I didn't do nothing special. I seen this girl. We kicked it for a little bit. You know, I had knew her. The nice people let me use a car. Yeah. Did you go back to? Did you come back to Illinois? Yeah, Chicago. Chicago. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Chicago. Oh yeah. Now, when you came back to Chicago, did you? Immediately, did you take some time off, or did you um, immediately start looking for a job? Uh, you mean when I got out of two years of Vietnam? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I called some places when I checked out some places, and you know, and. In August, I went to CTA and got hired to CTA, driving a bus for two years, but I was kind of wild. I was kind of wild, and uh, I didn't make it too long, two years. So after, after you, you had some difficulties and, you know, you, um, you had some growing up to do. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Right. Absolutely. And, and um, did you take advantage of uh, the benefits? No. No, I did not. Uh, I went to West Side. That's because I'm from the West Side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to talk about it, and, you know, people. People playing nut row, they don't know. They can't help me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get a service connected until 1998. All those years. And my son, my family suffered dearly. Three girls. Uh, my wife, and uh, uh, I left 
when I left uh, CTA, then I went uh, to trade school, City College, became a welder, combination welder. Then I worked for General Motors, certified welder. You know, make good money. And I welded for about 12 years. I welded with the Boilermakers and uh, down in Peoria for a little bit, a couple of years. But uh, I didn't mind working. They were playing plentiful jobs. Nothing like now. Forget about it. You know. But I kept fighting to get my service connection. And I'm sorry to say it took my pig leg for them to recognize I got a pig leg for them to give me some con some connection. They started me off at 30%, but I'm, I'm, I'm 220 right now. And if I was, if I was 30 then, if I'm 100 now and over, I was 100 then. You know, Vietnam, it hurt me a great deal too, mentally. But then you have to come back out here and you have to be re-educated and you have to calm down so you don't do nothing rash, you know, hurt no one or get hurt, things like that, you know. Okay, and you're talking about a peg. My, my, uh, your leg. Prosthetic, prosthetic, yeah. Okay, and you. I just call it pig leg, I'm sorry. And you immediately lost that right after the service? No, I didn't lose that until my first surgery to cut my foot off in, in two, 2003, 2003, right? Yeah, 2003. And then that January. They had my second surgery, but I had to go below the knee. And that's where I was in recovery, or what you call it, a recovery or rehab for six months, you know, and learn how to heal and learn how to walk with the pig leg. You know, and it was, it was quite devastating, you know. Um, I got sprayed heavily with, with that Agent Orange, and you don't know what happens to later on in life. You know, I got emphysema. I got all kinds of stuff. But I'm with Jesus Christ. So I'm hanging in there. Much as one, he caught for me, you know what I'm saying. I ain't losing no sleep. Got to try to be there for the girls and my wife, and yeah. Do Do you belong to any veterans organizations? I was commander of the Sable American Veterans. That unit that George Rodriguez is in now, I was commander of that unit. I've been also commander of the VFW locally and um, got to be too much. You got to go here, there, became too much. I started losing where I was at, you know. Yeah, I got, a, I got, uh, I helped some people, but uh, you know, help starts at home for my family. I was by myself, of course not. Be different, be different story, you know. I have plenty, plenty more time on my hands. Do your hat, you showed us the ninth infantry. Infantry. What are the two flags? In the bar. Of course, 
the nice. This is the like a Vietnam colors. Mm -hmm. This this one here. So you can tell by looking at it. And truly, uh, I don't know. This is just design. I don't know. Truly, need know the design. But you can see here, you got the flags, same as this. Then you got Vietnam veteran on the on the back. Is there anything that you would like the people that hear your interview? Or that listen to your interview. Is there anything you would like to say to them? Or is there anything that you would like specifically for them to know? Yes, I would first begin with uh, thank you for the parade uh, in 86, uh, which was a long time coming, but at least it was, it was so great. It was good. I like to uh, wish that they would support these hospitals or these veterans, you know, and uh, either visit them or write them a card, especially at this time of the year. Um, and for these idiots that are downtown, not downtown, Taylor Street, give these guys their benefits. These guys, these guys back here, I got a year, uh, they're, they're one or two years behind. Because all of, they did, only thing they did was turn people down. They have very few. I know, and I know it's a lot of veterans, over 30, 30 million veterans in, in uh, this area. But do something for them. Do something for the better. You know, and uh, help help the veterans. I'm I'm I'm, I'm so disconnected. I ain't bad off. But for the for the guys that don't have, they not don't not don't have it. I just got in my last seat. The boss was going to take a cigarette smoke. It was safe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, some people walk around with their head in the air. I just wish they can do more for the veterans, especially. I have to say the Vietnam veteran because I'm a Vietnam veteran. But you have to. You have to, you have to, I give praise to the guys and gals that was in uh, Iraq and Iraq, Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, and, and uh, <clears throat> they come home with a lot of stuff in their garbage, in their bag, depression bag, anxiety bag, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, this country is the richest country in the world. And they give, they give bit, millions of dollars to billions of dollars to other countries. Other countries. They can't even take care of their own. Woo. Oh, that's my girl. She's a dentist. She works in the dentist. But, uh, Yeah, it's disheartening, so. Well, at this point, remember, <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for the time that you served our country, the time you gave to our country, and all that you did for our country. That's right. Um, I would also like to thank you for the opportunity 
that you've given me today to sit down and share in your history and your story. I appreciate this and I am honored. Thank you. <coughs> that you've given me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity.